Irish Trekkie just stopping by to let you know that today's video is brought to you by our sponsors, Starfleet International. Starfleet International is the world's largest and oldest Star Trek fan association, providing a place where Star Trek fans can meet up, get to know each other, have fun and share in their love of Star Trek. I'm a member over here in Ireland in Region 20, so why not help out the channel, jump down to the description box and head over and let them know that Irish Trekkie sent you. And maybe we can meet up for one of their fantastic events. Greetings everyone and welcome back to another Star Trek The Official Starships Collection issue review. This time we are celebrating issue 100. We have the Daedalus class. And before you set course to watch this video, maybe jump back into my previous videos. I'll actually link it in the description to make life easy for you. But um, I, along with uh, many other community contributors, Soundwave SG1, the Trek Collector Geekology, the Eagle Moss Facebook fan page, um, Bombard1701, uh, Nils, Walter Kahn, uh, I think that was everyone that showed up by the day. We all got together and did a live cast uh, last Friday to celebrate uh, reaching 100 issues. And uh, it was a bit fun. Good conversation. It was more than a bit of a fun. Uh, it was a whole lot of fun to uh, chat with some awesome people and everyone in chat as well. So uh, thanks for those who stopped by. And uh, listen, check it out whenever you want to. But anyway, let's have a look. We have what looks to be a lovely big model here. Uh, with a slightly wonky nacelle, but we'll have a look at that later. Let's put this model to one side and let's have a look at this magazine, shall we? So, we have a fantastic graphic here of the USS Horizon Daedalus class. It is an exploration ship launched in the 22nd century, crewed by 229 souls and a length of 140 meters. So, let's see what goodies lay inside, shall we? Our four sections comprise of the Daedalus class, designing the ship, the Star Trek history of space exploration, which could be very interesting, and on-screen appearances. Here's our mounting instructions. As per normal Federation ships, it's mounting onto the pylons. And we have a lovely uh, front view here of the Daedalus class, with additional information being top speed warp 7, um, photon torpedo launchers, and phaser emitters. And we have some close-ups of the impulse, pylons, and uh, aft exhausts. So, we're greeted with another fantastic graphic here as well. The Daedalus class was one of the first Starfleet ships to explore deep space after the Federation had been set up. So the history is this came into being around the time of the NX class uh, phasing out. So the Federation was just kicking off. So we have our first Warp 7 capable ship and um, it would just head off to the unknown and uh, get into all sorts of shenanigans. And it appeared... Well, not that it appeared, um, it was noted in several episodes, um, the Daedalus class ships, a couple of different ones, the Exeter um, and Horizon and stuff like that as well. Um, the Daedalus class followed a similar configuration to most subsequent designs of Starfleet vessels and featured a primary and secondary hull. Unlike later designs, on the Daedalus class the elements were spherical and rounded, so we have our kind of truncated... Uh, drive section with our spherical primary hull as well um, but again it says here which makes sense because um, of its uniform shape um, it would evenly apply pressure across the hull especially in a vacuum so here we have some more uh, detail on the Daedalus here as well so we have some um, oh so these are these are the episodes actually do you know where we had like Chicago land where uh, the crew interacted with the native population. This is before the Prime Directive and all that good stuff. Chicago mobs of the 20s. And then we have the criminals luring in um, the Exeter. Or the, not the Exeter, the Essex. I do apologise. 40 lashes for me. Um, so there's actually some good history with these ships. And um, yeah, and, it, and the interesting thing about this as well, because they were explorer e exploration ships as well, they were generally out of contact with Starfleet. 
and the Federation when they were going off. There wasn't any huge array of uh, subspace relays or anything like that as well. And they relied on, you know, unfortunately not faster than light communication. So it would take years for messages to come back. And if they were, if they got into like trouble or shenanigans, they were kind of on their own. Um, so real frontier kind of stuff um, as well. So here we have the ship profile. So uh, we have a little breakdown on the possessed crew from um, that TNG episode. Um, as regards to points of interest, the engineering hull, RCS thrusters, warp nacelles, access boom, buzzard nipples, <laughs> uh, aft sensor palace, main bridge, loads of little air docks um, all over the place, um, phaser emitters, the front. So pretty cool. The, you know, the ship is growing on me, to be honest with you. It, it, it is growing on me. So, here we have designing the Daedalus class. So, CG render by Fabio Passaro of the Daedalus class ship was based on photographs of an original model that was specially created for this magazine. Now, I remember that Jeffries, Matt Jeffries toyed with the idea of a spherical design. Because he didn't want the whole, I think the culture at the time was, you know, flying saucers and stuff like that as well. So he didn't want that to be kind of impacting the design of um, Enterprise. But the the, the dish um, just, w it worked out better. Um, and it became iconic as well. But I do like the spherical one. It's, it grows on me more and more. And um, again, like this model, um, at Michael Kuda's request, the Daedalus class model was built by Greg Jean, based on the design of Matt Jeffries had for the original Enterprise. There we go. I am legendary smart. <laughs> no, not really. Um, here we have some of the images from that model as well. Not super detailed. Um, you can see the kind of uh, sensor palette at the front were just stick on pads and stuff like that as well. But um, some interesting information here on it. And then we have our piece on exploring um, space exploration in uh, Star Trek. So we have First Contact, Botany Bay, Khan, Thriving Colony is settled on Mars in the 21st century. It's, it, this is when Star Trek is at its best. You know, frontier, you know, nomad. Uh, There's a great one here when uh, the Enterprise went back to 1969 and John Christopher uh, had his encounter with the Enterprise. Um, Aries, we have Friendship 1. All that good stuff as well. So it's nice to see a, a feature on exploration. Oh, here we have Friendship 1. Um, but yeah, really good thing. So founding the Federation, Starship Expansion. And then we have our piece on um, episodes, the return of the Archons and everything like that in between. So next up, we have the Bajoran Freighter, which is interesting enough. Looking forward to that one. So let's close out on the magazine. And let's have a look at this model, shall we? So, here we have it. Looks decent in size. I've had a quick peek, but nothing too intense. So we're going to be having a look at this in proper detail. Our stand and our base. FYI, my base has a big smudge on it, <laughs> but it's 5295A slash B, so not an AA run, unfortunately. But um, yeah, let's have a look at this. This looks like the arrival ship, actually. It's just dawned on me. Anyway, let's have a look at the ship, shall we? So here we have the horizon. Windows are... Hang on. Are they? Misaligned, unfortunately, and they're kind of interesting blue... Would have been nicer to have them maybe like a bold white, but um, again, as I said, don't mould them if you can't match up the paint. Um, good strip along the side there. Again, the windows are slightly misaligned. We can see our nav lights. If I can just focus on that there. Do, do, do. There we go. There's our dock and collar. Looks pretty nice. The blue just looks a little bit bland, to be honest with you, against the hull. And it's a shame on those windows that they're misaligned. And here we have another array on the front. Uh, decal looks nice and clean. USS Horizon. Going down the boom arm. 
Actually, here's the bridge as well. Not a huge amount of paint detail on here. Um, impulses are painted in as well. Back dock and collar, as you can see there. Boom arm. It's hard to focus this thing with the architecture of it. Uh, there's no windows on the boom arm painted in anyway. I have seen some images of these being very misaligned, but they're pretty neat on my arm, uh, my model. Some detailing down the, the arms of the pylons there as well. My uh, little buzzard nipples, they're there. <laughs> as you can see, the... Um, let me focus on that there, sorry. One of my Morpney cells are a little bit misaligned, but I'm sure that that can come off and be reseated without any major issue. So overall, the paint apps that are on it look nice and crisp. Going down the dorsal side, good mold on it, good sculpt. NCC 176, United Federation. Seam is nicely hidden there as well. Ventral side, we got some more detailing there as well. And we got some little red pinstriping too. The aft should have a lot of detailing there as well. Aft is that nice actually. And then we have those exhausts on the nacelles there as well. So they have molded in as well. So there's plastic on the buzzards, but nowhere else. Probably would have been pretty hard to get them on the nacelle and the impulse actually, to be in all fairness. Um, I do like the capping on the end of this. I like the difference in the paint. You could almost imagine like it's a unibody, even though there is like hull plating and stuff like that as well, and just like screws on. Um, but yeah, it's a nice ship, to be honest with you. The paint apps could be a little bit more detailed, to be honest. But, um, you know, I think it's okay. I think it's a nice uh, issue 100, to be honest with you. A little, just, just a little bit wonky. But my paint apps bar my window misalignment. They're pretty okay. I like it. So, let's compare it to a ship in the line. And let's get a sense of scale, shall we? So, as I have her spinning around there, do you know, it's, it's a nice looking ship. For, for one of the older era, you know, there's a good mould on it. And I think it, an okay paint application. Just a couple of little things that could have been, um, could have been better on it. But um, that's always going to be the case, really. And I know some people would kind of argue <laughs> against that. But, um, you know, I think it's a good replication of, of what it should be. Um, I have seen some people modding the ship already and um, especially the windows and, and the ring um but that's listen that's out of my skill set to be honest with you <laughs> so let's compare it to a ship in the line just so we can get a sense of scale of course i had to get the uss pasteur out there ncc five was it five eight nine two five i think I'm, i can barely see it there myself <laughs> so this is a uh, captain picard's uh ship and yes, Beverly Picard's ship. Um, I actually got her, I got Gates McFadden to sign my magazine, which was awesome. Um, but you can see here we have um, very distant future relations of each other. Um, but the design elements, I think, are honoured very much. I actually loved this model. Huge amount of detail on it. And uh, paint apps and mould were lovely on it as well. But you can definitely see the kind of lineage uh, of these two ships. And uh, I was glad that they used that model for all good things. But anyway, um, that'll pretty much wrap up this issue review. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, amazing that we're at issue 100. I know we have more than 100 ships. But, um, you know, it's, it's one of those iconic numbers that definitely are worthwhile celebrating. And I want to thank Eagle Moss for partnering with me, uh, getting my band of brothers together um, in celebrating that last Friday. And for sponsoring a great giveaway as well. Um, if you were there, you'd know the giveaway. If not, sucks to be you. I'm only messing. <laughs> it was pretty good. And um, that should be shipping this week, actually, to the winner. So, uh, yes, listen, I will finish up there my ramblings. Thanks for your support, as always. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. So take it easy and goodbye. <laughs>